Lesson 6.4, Prove Triangles Similar by AA. We have a postulate, postulate 22, that is the angle-angle similarity. It states that if two angles of one triangle are concurrent to two angles of the other triangle, then the two angles, two triangles will always be similar. This sort of makes sense because we know that if two angles are congruent, then the third angles would have to be by the third, tri third angle theorem, and so that actually gives us all of the angles congruent. So we know that these are similar. We don't know anything about the sides, but if all of the angles are congruent, then we have similarity. So if I want to determine whether the triangles are similar here, I need to match up the corresponding angles. Well, I already know that angle D and G are 90 degrees and they're similar. So what I'm going to need to do is find one of these others. By the triangle sum theorem, I can say 26 plus 90 plus angle E is 180. And when I solve that, I see that angle E is actually 64 degrees. So now I have 90 degree angle and 64 degree angle. So by the angle, angle similarity postulate, I have the two triangles similar. To show that two triangles are similar, ABE, ABE is this small triangle up top, and ACD is the whole big triangle. Now, how can I show that? I've got one set of angles congruent. Do I have another? Well, you notice that angle A is part of both of those, so we could go that route. We also see that these two angles are corresponding, which means that these lines are parallel, so we could use that route. If I'm going to actually write a two-column proof, I'll start out stating that angle ABE and angle C are both congruent. That's given, so we have congruent angles. These two lines are parallel by the corresponding angle converse, so AEB, this angle, is congruent to angle D because of corresponding angles theorem, so now we have the angle-angle postulate. Show that these two triangles are congruent. Well, let's look at how we would go about that. Since we've got some parallel lines and we've got a transversal cut, I've got this angle that's congruent to that one. That's alternate interior angles. I've got some vertical angles, so that will be enough. My parallel lines give me alternate interior. My vertical give me congruent, so I know I've got two angles. So I've got angle-angle similarity. Show that these triangles are similar. Well, it doesn't have these angles congruent, so I've got to go another route. I see that these are all equiangular, which means that they're all 60 degrees. And I see that these are equiangular, so they're all 60 degrees. So actually, it's pretty easy to show that because you do have angle-angle because everything is 60 degrees. Show that these are similar. Now, CDF, CDF is this larger triangle, and DEF is this one. Well, I know that this is 90 degrees, so that makes that 90 degrees. If this is 90 and that's 32, for this one, that would leave 58, which matches this angle and this one. Therefore, I've got angle-angle similarity. Once again, it's just making sure that we have two corresponding angles that are congruent. Standardized test, I have a flagpole, cast a shadow that's 50 foot long, and I've got a woman that's 5 foot 4 that cast a sh shadow of 40 inches. So this shadow is 40 inches, and this shadow is 50 feet. I want to know this woman is 5 foot 4 inches, and so I need to know how tall the flagpole is. Well, I'm going to use similar triangles. The flagpole and the woman are here. We know that the angle that the sun hits will be the same, and we know that these are right angles, so I've got angle-angle similarity. So I can set up a proportion. 5 foot 4 inches is actually 64 inches, so how many feet 
goes with 64 inches. If 50 feet goes with 40 inches, I do my cross product and I can see that it is 80. So that flagpole is 80 feet tall. What if the child is 58 inches tall is standing next to the woman? How long is a child's shadow? Well, we had that the woman was 64 inches and she had a 40 inch shadow. This kid is 58 inches and we're looking for its shadow and so we do our cross multiplication and we get it, 36.25. Remember guided practice, you should try this before I actually do it. So you can pause the video and try it. You're standing in your backyard and you measure the length of the shadow cast by both you and a tree, write a proportion showing how you could find the height of the tree. So remember that the height of the tree compared to its shadow has to be equal to your height compared to the your shadow. So the tree height and your height, the length of the tree shadow, and the length